our next presenter um, is Sai Ping So, and she works for the Maryland Department of Agriculture, and she's the lady that's in charge of um, manure transportation. So if we have a question, she's the lady that we need to work with. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the manure transport program, um, what it is, uh, how to use it, how to apply for the, for the cost share. Uh, just a little background first. Uh, the manure transport program has been around for a long time. It's been around for over 20 years. It started in 1999. Uh, the purpose of it is to help cover the cost of transporting manure to land with soils having the capacity to um, utilize additional phosphorus or to be used in environmentally um, acceptable ways other than land application, and that's what we call alternative uses. And there are really two parts to the program. There's a poultry side and a dairy and livestock side. But today I'm going to be focusing on the poultry side of the program um, because there's been a lot of interest lately, especially lately, because of the high fertilizer costs and more and more people are interested in, in possibly using poultry litter as an alternative to um, or in addition to chemical fertilizers. Uh, here's just a little, some stats from last year. Uh, last fiscal year, uh, about 109,400 tons of poultry litter went through our program. 63% uh, of that went to alternative uses. Um, so the only um, sort of uh, eligible alternative uses at this time are to take it up to the mushroom companies in southern Pennsylvania where they they compost it to create the mushroom growing substrate. And then 37% 30, was land applied on farms. And we spent about $1.87 million on the program, and that includes the state's share, and also the poultry companies contribute to the, to the project as well. Okay, so there are two different ways of applying for our program. Um, there's what we call the standard process and the fast track process. Now for years and years, it, we used to only have the standard process. That was the only way you could apply to the program. Um, and you had to, and we still have this process in place and some farmers still use it because when they, when fast track, um, when they find that fast track doesn't work for them, then they can use the standard process. But it is a little more, um, it takes more time. You have to apply through your SCD office. The good thing is there are no restrictions on the types of crops or the manure application rates, but you do need to submit, you have to have your nutrient management plan all prepared and ready, and you have to submit the manure recommendations from your nutrient management plan along with your application. And you need to submit all of this before you start hauling the litter. So it's, we, a couple of years ago, um, we'd gotten feedback from, from farmers saying that this process just didn't work for them because of the nature of the way poultry manure moves around <laughs> the state. Um, it was taking too long for them to get approved for transport. So we developed this fast track process. So it's somewhat streamlined and easier. Uh, you can submit the forms and apply directly to MDA, meaning me, because I'm the one that looks at all the applications. You don't have to go through your SCD offices, but you can go into your SCD offices, of course, and get help from them if you want. But the big thing is that you can haul the litter first and then apply for the cost share later. You don't have to wait for this pre-approval, which is what we used to um, require. So it, this provides more flexibility for farmers with time-sensitive uh, manure hauling situations. But because we're not asking for your nutrient management plan, we do limit it to certain crops and manure application rates. Okay. Uh, so the way it works is it's it's up to the farmer to find a source of poultry litter and arrange for the transport. We don't get involved in that sort of thing. This is where it gets kind of tricky. Um, so we do have a list of manure brokers on our website. So you can go to the website and call around to manure brokers and 
see if you can get some manure. Generally, they'll, they'll sell the litter and they will deliver it. Some can also spread it. Um, if you have your own trucks and can transport it yourself, they'll often sell it directly off the farm. They'll help load your trucks and then you can transport it. Or of course you can source it directly from a poultry grower. So um, I'm a little afraid that I'm going to get people all jacked up about getting poultry litter. And then because I have heard reports that it's very hard to come by right now. So if you haven't already sourced poultry litter, then yeah, you probably won't find it this year. But you can take this information and then think about next year. So that's, yeah, that's a problem. Um, so only the user of the manure, what we call the receiving operation, can or, the, or a manure broker can apply for the cost share, not both. And we had an unfortunate situation like early on in the program where the communication was not so great and the, the manure broker was applying for the cost share and the farmer was applying for cost share. They thought they could both get cost share for the same loads of manure, which of course they can't. So I think most of the brokers now are pretty, they're, they're becoming, you know, they're more familiar with the program now and I think they're making it pretty clear to their customers when they are going to be applying for the cost share. Because that has to be made clear up front whether or not the farmer or the manure broker, if you go through a broker, is going to be applying for the cost share. Um, okay, the litter, it must come from a Maryland poultry grower, and they have to grow for one of the, these four um, poultry companies, Amic, Mount Air, Purdue, or Tyson. And that's because these poultry companies contribute funds to the, to the program. Each year they contribute an amount of money, and they pay to transport, or help pay to transport litter from their growers. So um, you'll notice Alan Harim is not on here. So if you find manure from an Alan grower, it would not be eligible for cost share through our program. OK, the, the way the payments work, uh, we have two different base rates depending on where the poultry farm is. So we have the 16 cents per ton per mile rate if the litter comes from a grower located in Dorchester, Somerset, Wicomico, or Worcester counties. And it's 14 cents per ton per mile for litter coming from any other county. But um, we do cap it at $28 per ton. And that's probably, that's probably easier to see through an example what I mean by that. So say, um, you know, you've transported 23 tons, which is approximately a tractor trailer load of um, manure, poultry litter. So 23 tons gets transported 180 miles from Somerset County to St. Mary's. So if you do the math, 16 cents times 23 times 180, you come up with 662.40. But we cap it at $28 per ton. So you can't get that amount. You can only get the $28 times 23 tons. So that's, that's the maximum you could get for that truckload of manure. Um, on the other hand, if you take that same truckload, you transport it 65 miles from, say, Worcester County to Denton, um, you do the math there, you would get the 239.20 for that truckload. Okay, with Fast Track, uh, because we're not asking for your nutrient management plan, um, we, we've limited it to these crops. So it's, you know, these, um, at these application rates. So we've limited it to corn at three tons per acre, soybeans at one and a half tons per acre, non-legume hay at three tons per acre, and sorghum at one and a half tons per acre. Now your nutrient management plan, if it says you can apply more, you know, say your plan says you can apply 4.6 tons per acre on corn, you can do that. I mean, you, you are legally, you know, able to do that, but we will only pay for three tons per acre through our program. And all of your fields have to be um, less than or equal to 100 
FIV for phosphorus. Uh, naturally, you can, you can field stack, um, stockpile the poultry litter, you know, in your fields, but you, you just have to follow the nutrient management program guidelines um, for stockpiling. Uh, the litter does need to be spread the following growing season. So if you started stockpiling in, say, November, you would have to spread it in the spring. And, you know, these are the, the guidelines, you at least keep the piles at least 100 feet from any surface water, drainage ditch, swale, or gully, unless, um, or 35 feet if there's a vegetative buffer in place, at least 150 feet from wells, springs, and wetlands, and at least 300 feet from a well that's down gradient from the stockpile, at least 200 feet from a neighbor's house. Naturally, you don't want it in any flood, flood prone areas and um, no farther than 150 feet from the top of a 3% slope if there's no diversion um, to help catch some of the water from that slope. Okay, so this is what you need to submit with your fast track application. So that we, we have a separate application and claim form. I'm not sure, I, I think our attorneys wanted it that way, but so you can either send in your application first and get it pre-approved or, and this is what most farmers do, is they, you can send in the application and claim for payment at the same time after you've hauled all the litter. And with the application and claim, you have to submit soil tests that are less than three years old for your fields, uh, maps of your fields, from your nutrient management plan showing field numbers and acreages. And please submit maps that, like FSA maps don't always match up with your nutrient management plan. So if you're, if you submit an FSA map where the fields and the acreages don't match up with your plan and your soil tests, then I'm gonna to be totally confused and I'm gonna be calling you and ask, asking you <laughs> for different maps. Um, you will need to obtain a manure analysis of the poultry litter, which you can generally get from the grower or your manure broker if you go through a broker. Um, if you decide you want to test the litter yourself, uh, you know, because perhaps the, the analysis from the grower is too old or, you know, you just want a more representative um, test of what you're going to be getting, uh, you can test it and we will reimburse for up to $40 for one manure test. Okay, with the claim for payment, you do need to weigh at least one out of every five truckloads of poultry litter. They have to be weighed on a certified scale. And we need some sort of documentation like a weight ticket for those weighed loads. Um, you can either submit the printed ticket from the scale or you can, if you can't get a printed ticket, you can hand write the weights, the tear weight, you know, the empty truck weight and the gross weight, along with, you know, the date that the truck was transported and uh, the truck ID or the license um, number. And I have an, oops, I have an example, handwritten ticket here that could be submitted. Certified by MDA, which yeah. We have an on farm scale that gets checked every year by Fairbanks. Is that not acceptable? Um, we have we print tickets on every load. Is that, an M, is that certified by weights and measures? No. In our, hmm. We don't, because we don't really do a filling cost. It's internal. Then I think technically no. Although. I'm sure they could. Yeah, I don't know how much it costs. How much is it? Two hundred fifty. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look into that some more. Okay. Okay, yeah. 
Um, okay, to reiterate, with the fast track process, you can submit the application and the claim together after you've hauled the litter. The forms can be downloaded from our, our website, and uh, you can send the forms directly to MDA, to me. Um, there's no need to go into your SCD office, but you can always go in there. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. All right, this is what um, our, our web page looks like. And so the fast track forms are over on the right hand side. Uh, the list of manure brokers and spreading services is also here. Um, oh, there's also a link to this litter app. Uh, you may have heard of this. <clears throat> the Delmarva Chicken Association put out this new app for your phone, and it's, uh, you can download it from Apple Play or, um, you know, is it Google Play? Uh, the Apple Store. <laughs> One, of One of those. And uh, it's, it's sort of like an online, online classifieds for poultry litter. You can post whether or not you're looking for litter or whether you have litter available uh, to sell. So that's, that's another option for trying to find poultry litter. Okay, oh, this is just, just wanted to show what the application form looks like. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the applicant's information gets put up in the top box. The, uh, the poultry grower's information goes here. You have to make sure that you check the right, the uh, poultry company that they grow for. And then the eligible receiving operation information goes here. And in this case, if the farmer is the one applying for the funds, then the farmer's name and information goes here and here. If a broker is applying for the funds, then the broker's name goes up top, and the uh, farmer's, the receiving farmer's information goes down here. All right, this is uh, the worksheet that needs to be filled out for the application. This is where you would list every field that's going to receive manure. Um, just, you know, field number, acres, what crop you're going to grow. And then in this blue section, that's where you put your soils data, the date of your soil test, and then the phosphorus FIVs. So the FIV value has to be less than or equal to 100, um, the application rate and the, the tons. These are calculated automatically if you fill the form out on, on your computer. So the thing with the soils data is, depending on who writes your plan, you may need to dig into your nutrient manage management plan to find the FIV values. Um, if somebody from UMD Extension does your plan, then there's this nice soil summary sheet in your nutrient management plan that clearly lists all your fields and um, your nutrient values from your soil test, and it, it's, it con has converted it to the FIV values. But if somebody else writes your plan, you may have to look at the original soil tests. And this one from Spectrum Analytic, you can see, so this, uh, this shows tests for five fields. Um, up here, they've listed the phosphorus in parts per million, and then Conveniently down here, they've converted it to the FIV values. So that's, you know, then you would put the FIV value here on the application. But um, this one from AgroLab is different. They, they don't convert, they haven't converted the parts per million into the FIV value. So we have a, with, within the application, there's this uh, sort of, I don't know, cheat sheet, this, this chart that will let you look at your uh, soil test result and see whether or not it, the FIV value is equivalent to 100 FIV or, or less. So in that case, um, so here the parts per million is 63. If you go to the sheet, you go up to AgroLab, you can see if anything 90 parts per million or below is eligible, so then that, that field that's 63 is fine. 
and then you would, oops, again, uh, you would actually put the value, um, the numbers here in this column, column eight. All right. Oh, this is um, the claim for payment. This is pretty straightforward. But this is um, the wait ticket log that you have to fill out with the claim for payment. So this is where you would list every, every truckload that was transported. And remember I said you have to weigh at least one out of every five truckloads. So you can see here the one, two, three, four. These trucks were weighed and they've, um, they've put the, the gross weight and the tear weight and then the net weight gets calculated for those that were actually weighed. And the rest are estimated weights, and you can just put an estimated weight for, for the trucks. And then the, the number of tons is calculated down here, and it gets, it populates the first page of the claim, and it calculates the payment. Okay. So we do require that the sending operation um, sign your claim for payment. They just, somebody, like either the, um, the poultry grower, the operator or the owner of the poultry farm or their clean out service or their manure broker, somebody associated with that sending farm that has knowledge of and can attest to the number of tons that left that farm. They need to sign the claim as well as the receiving operation. Okay, so that's that's the end of my manure transport. Are there any questions about that before I move on to something else? No? Okay. I thought that magic number was one So you're right. So the nutrient management regulations um, do allow you to add phosphorus to your fields up to FIV 150, uh, but for our program, we're limiting, limiting it to 100 because we really want we don't want we don't really want to be helping to pay transport fields to to fields that don't really need. The phosphorus, because below, I mean, above 100, you technically don't really have a phosphorus recommendation. So we're really trying to target the lower phosphorus fields to get the manure onto the those lower phosphorus fields. But you are right, Marilyn, you are allowed to to add phosphorus onto fields up to 150. Any other questions? Okay. I have one. A lot of the phosphorus that's out there that shows up isn't available anyway. So it's tied up. So I don't understand those regulations the way they're written. It ought to be on available phosphorus rather than tied up phosphorus. She's just presenting the information, so our soil fertility specialist is going to be talking next, so we'll have him address that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to punt that over to him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a paper pusher. I just administer this program. Go <laughs> ahead. Okay, so um, Jason Kepler was on the agenda, but he was, he's, unfortunately was not able to be here today, so he asked me to go over um, a couple of slides for him. So within the MAX program, we're now cost sharing on these satellite poultry waste storage structures. Uh, this is new as of, I guess, last May. So these are geared towards crop farmers who want to build a storage structure um, to hold poultry litter, store it, you know, close to the fields where they're going to be spreading it. You know, our traditional MAX program, um, the waste storage structures were only el eligible for livestock and poultry farmers. You know, you had to have, you had to be raising animals in order to be eligible for cost share for waste storage. But now this is different because crop farmers are now eligible for this. But there are certain uh, requirements, of course. 
Uh, the applicant must demonstrate an ability to utilize the poultry litter on row crops in accordance with your nutrient management plan. Uh, the parcel must have a current, I guess, conservation plan. A soil health evaluation must be performed. I'm not really sure what that is, but I guess they come out. It's, oh, okay. And of course, you have to be in compliance with nutrient management regulations. Um, the storage structure must be installed on land that will be receiving manure, or I assume at least close next to land that will be receiving manure, and it has to be owned by the applicant. So you can't um, build it on leased land. And then one project per parcel. If you want more than one structure, they have to be at least five miles apart, because the idea is to you know have these structures you know hold an amount of litter that will service you know the surrounding fields. So we don't want like two structures right next to each other. They have to be spread apart. Oh, and the it can only um, you can only store uh, poultry litter that was generated in Maryland in the structure. So the state doesn't want to be paying for these structures, and then you go and you fill it up with Delaware's manure. Okay, there's a flat rate of $9 per square foot, a $50,000 cap. Um, the sizing of the structure is based on your eligible acres. And I think what they do, they have this, uh, oops, sorry, this sizing calculation worksheet. They take all of your acres, um, all of your acres with FIV less than 101, and then they take half of that. I think they're um, assuming a corn soybean rotation so that at any you know, a given year you're going to be applying poultry litter to half of your acres to the corn, corn land. And they base it on three tons per acre application rate and then they size it accordingly. Um, let me see what else. Non-standard design is allowable if approved by an NRCS engineer. It needs to be placed at least 100 feet from surface water. Uh, you can temporarily store manure management equipment in the, in the structure. No alternate alterations are permitted and it is subject to a nutrient management plan implementation evaluation at least once every three years. And then, of course, we have additional provisions that are in the max attachment. So, okay, that's all I have. Are there any questions about the satellite poultry storage structures? Excellent. All right, now we, um, before we get our next speaker up, um, Janelle Eck McHenry is here, and she's going to, she's from the uh, 4R Alliance. And if you all don't know, last night was the Maryland Ag, I still call the Maryland Ag Dinner, but it's the Maryland, the Taste of Maryland, celebration of agriculture, and the Eck family was inducted into the Maryland Ag Hall of Fame. So, congratulations. Thank you, guys. Um, so before I talk about the 4R Alliance, I just wanted to throw a blurb out there that the Mid-Atlantic Certified Crop Advisors currently has a scholarship available um, for students working in agronomy or plant science degrees. It's due next Friday, so if you guys know anybody that's interested, please let me know, and I'll be happy to get you guys the information. Um, it is also online on our website at Mid-Atlantic CCA. All right. Um, so I work with the Delaware, Maryland 4R Alliance, which is an alliance um, that we partnership with the Mid-Atlantic for our Nutrient Stewardship Association. So we're working on getting every nutrient source to be applied at the right rate, at the right time, in the right place, and with the right source. Um, so with that, we got a grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation last year in 2020. So we have some call share available. Um, so if you guys are looking to add an additional split of nitrogen than what you typically do to your corn crop, this year and next year, we have $15 available per acre. So we did five farms here in Kent and Queen Anne's County um, this past year, and we saw yield improvement on all split increases. So we went from one to two, two to three, 
three to four, and four to five. So it was available to an array of farmers. So if you guys are looking to add that additional split, we'd be happy to work with you. We're going to take that information, I'm going to keep it confidential, and we're going to make a case study localized to um, the Chesapeake Bay region to kind of see, you know, the benefits of ad adding an additional split. Where's the economic standpoint of how many splits is going to be, you know, too many. So we're looking at that number and trying to figure that out. So if you guys are interested, um, I have a table here. You're more than welcome to come chat with me, and we're trying to get some more farmers in our region signed up. Um, and then lastly with that, with the grant funding, we made a benchmarking survey to see where you guys are in the 4R spectrum. So if you're interested in stopping by our booth, we have that printed out. We also have it available online just to see where you guys are and to see where you can move forward with the 4Rs. Uh, yes, Luke Clifton. My last name is Clifton. Uh, I'm from King Crop Insurance. Uh, of course, we're located in Sussex County, Delaware, but we service all of Delmarva, all of Maryland, in fact. And um, I'm here, first of all, to remind you that sales closing date for spring crops is March 15th, so a little less than two weeks left. Um, and that's also for your processing vegetables, if you're canning beans and your peas, or not your peas, but your uh, tomatoes. And then also um, your sweet corn. And uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, the FSA has a cover crop, crop program that you need to report your cover crop acres by the 15th of March if you want to receive a $5 discount on your crop insurance premium. So if you have cover crop in the ground right now, make sure FSA knows about it. I know most people who have planted cover crop or small grains have already reported it, but just in case, make sure they know about it. That way you can receive whatever discount you are eligible for. Um, also, with the input costs being extremely high, in some cases doubling, and with the price of grain being as high as it is in most cases, take a look at your crop insurance policy. There's a lot of liability out there right now. Make sure that you are covered for whatever you're putting into the ground. Make sure that it's, you're getting the money that you put into the ground back out of it, at least. Um, of course, we want to make money more than what we put in. We don't want it to be like buried pirate's treasure. But if your crop insurance isn't covering everything you put in, you're not going to get it back. And also, um, one last thing, uh, besides the March 15th deadline, you know, there are private policies out there like Crop Hail that can cover the wheat you already have in the ground um, especially with the price of wheat right now, what it's trading at, you might want a little bit of extra coverage on your wheat just in case. So if you uh, want to talk about that or anything else, of course, I have a booth there, but you can also catch me at lunch or you can call me at the office. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, you, you probably, some of you know me from my, uh, my old job. I used to be a Syngenta sales rep for, I got 30 years, 35 years, so... And I retired 70 years ago, and we started an ag operation up in Sullivan's Aero Applicators. And uh, I don't know, but somebody came up to me today, a young guy came up and said, what is that? Anybody, can you guys read what this is on here? Has anybody sprayed ambush? If you have, put your hand up. Because if you have, you've been around a long time. Now, I know Bill Sylvester sprayed ambush because he's been around a long time. <laughs> we stopped spraying this stuff in Syngenta in about 1987. So... You know how many free get, free of uh, vests they gave out because I got a whole lifetime supply. This is my last one. So, but if you've ever used this, we're Shore Ag Air Service. We're up in Sellersville. I appreciate you if you use our, our business. Uh, we have just put in an airstrip down in Matthews Town, around that Cordova, Queen Anne area. So if you, if anybody's looking for a lawyer application business down there, we'd certainly be at, uh, be glad to help you. Uh, other than that, have a safe uh, year and try to figure out the, the ag environment that we're in today is pretty challenging. Thank you.